Hey, hi. Thank you. Now, definitely, you keep putting me on just before beers, um, so it's <laughs> making my, lo my job even more tough every time. Um, well, since we, we, I think, uncovered earlier on that uh, Bitcoins are definitely have no intrinsic value whatsoever, um, I would say, why do we have to worry about regulations, right? Um, well, that's not the case. Um, policymakers and regulators are very worried um, about cryptocurrencies, and that's why we're here. Now, a fireside chat usually has two chairs. <laughs> we're going to go yeah. for the uh, Irish pop discussion instead, yeah. so um, if that's all right. Would you introduce yourself? Ben? Yeah, uh, I'm Shane. I'm from uh, Japan. Um, we, we actually uh, operate a, a Bitcoin R&D team, and uh, also we have a venture capital that invests in a Bitcoin startup. So we have like a two arms for the R&D side and the venture capital side. So for the R&D side, you know, uh, we have like a 10 Bitcoin developer in-house. And uh, mainly uh, they are contributing to the Bitcoin core, uh, Lightning networks, and BTC pay, or some smart contract protocol called uh, discrete log contract, which is uh, actually we are working together with M MIT to deliver like a, you know, realize a peer-to-peer -peer derivative protocol. And uh, for the uh, venture capital side, we are actually invest in the Bookstream, and uh, we also invest in uh, a hardware, hardware world startup in Switzerland, and some uh, trading, non-custodial trading protocol, uh, it's called Owen in uh, Boston. So basically, we, uh, we have R&D to promote uh, Bitcoin, and uh, on the other side, we invest in uh, startups that drive the uh, Bitcoin adoptions. Very good. Yeah. Um, for disclosure, Ashley, Snitch is uh, the only person I actually knew here today when I arrived. Um, we met at a JFSA um, roundtable mm -hmm. in Tokyo back in uh, late March. So that's the uh, Japanese Financial Services Authority. So why is it important? Because um, Japan is currently the president of the G20. And uh, of particular importance is with the stage of maturity of the Bitcoin market in Japan. J Japan is not a stranger to the issues that they've had. Um, as presidency of the G20, they're very, very keen to make sure that uh, virtual currencies or crypto assets are actually part of the agenda and has been discussed by finance ministers. And there's a meeting in, uh, of the G20 in Fukuoka, actually, next the end of this weekend, yep. right? So um, I was privileged to actually spend two really good days. It's probably the best uh, roundtable I've ever attended. And maybe I wanted to share a bit of my experience of why it was important. And you can fit in some yep. of your, yep. your details around Japan. And then we can segue into, into regulations. Won't take you long because uh, regulations is a heavy topic this time, um, this time of the afternoon. Um, so as I mentioned, um, Japan cryptocurrency, and particularly Bitcoin market, is very mature. They've actually been doing this for much longer, say, of, of uh, any other country, I think, in, in the European Union, for example. Um, what was so good about the roundtable is that policymakers and regulators, so the Bank of Japan and the um, Japanese Financial Services Authority, organized two days where they brought in... Um, policymakers and regulators from across the world. So we had Japan, we had Canada, we had the Hong Kong Monetary Authority there, Singapore, someone from Baffin was there, um, uh, from AMF actually in, uh, in France, we had someone from the um, Security Exchange in Australia, and uh, did I forget anyone? And me. Oh, someone, <laughs> and Abu Dhabi. <laughs> so um, um, it was interesting because it was just outside of the European Union. So these are, we're talking about uh, regulators that um, they're actually a lot more uh, mature in terms of usage and acceptance and understanding what the technology can do, um, which I think is very important. Why was the roundtable also very good is because on the second day, uh, the GFSA did something really, really good. They literally brought in the likes of them um, she knew another private sector startups and technology companies, and they spend four or five hours doing an update on technology developments. So you can imagine um, policymakers and regulators sitting there actually understanding technology bits for the first time. It was just fascinating to see. These are the people who probably would not go and ask questions because they wouldn't know how to go about to do it, and they were able to, to ask directly from the rainmakers, okay, from the technology makers, which was very, very good. But why is all this important? So maybe you want, could you give us like um, uh, um, a flavor for what happened with the uh, Mangox um, and then with 
Yeah. For the incident. Um, yeah, I think Mount Gox is kind of a little bit, you know, uh, old one, but, uh, you know, last year in uh, in Japan, we have several hacking. Uh, one is uh, CoinCheck, which is like uh, 580 million loss, and uh, the other one is like uh, Zyf, Zyf. It also lost uh, 67 million something. So for, uh, you know, FSA, it's very important to the impose, uh, you know, uh, you know, like a traditional financial, you know, uh, regulation to the crypto asset ex exchanges. So, so, so after that, you know, uh, exchanges are, you know, enforced, you know, re required to enforce a lot of actions to improve the system securities, operational securities, or you know, something like that. So I think, uh, you know, last, you know, uh, 2018 was uh, kind of like a little bit calm down uh, in terms of the adoption of Bitcoin. But uh, it was something in necessary, you know, step to the to the to to accept the more wide wide adoptions, and yeah. So in terms of adoption of Bitcoin, I know we mentioned this um, mm -hmm. um, before. Could you give us a flavor? Um, well, like, because I know it's very hard because it's kind of <laughs> stuff is very hard to get data yeah. on. But in terms of is um, if it, what I could think you uh, the the account, you know, peop number of people who has the account in Japan is like uh, about three percent. In the population, and uh, however, that uh, the generation like uh, millennial ages or uh, generation mm -hmm. Z, that its adoption is like uh, about 10, 10 percent. So I think more younger people are accepting the Bitcoin, uh, you know, to in terms of buy and sell. And uh, I think it's, I think that's very important because uh, you know, given if if you know, think about uh, 10 years from now, you know, those people it's gonna get aged, and uh, then it's gonna be you know, more adoptions for the, you know, among the populations. Mm. So I think that a lot of technologies adoption was, you know, read by the younger generations. And uh, so, so in that context, I think it's, it's very important to see the, you know, the younger ages adoptions. Um, that's a very interesting point as well, because you're saying about 10% of a very specific um, age group cohort. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about obviously owning Bitcoin in mm. what would consider households, effectively, like instead of like institutionalized um, uh, so in terms of the fraud and the money lost through CoinCheck and Bangkok, these would actually have um, affected retail investors like you and I, you and I here. So as a, as a result of that, um, Japan then went ahead and um, uh, tried to integrate, but more retrofit um, with the, so if I'm correct, it's the GVCEA, which is the Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, there's in terms of they are intending to do self-regulation. Mm -hmm. So since their creation, they're trying to self-regulate exchanges in, uh, in Japan. But at the same time, there has been retrofitted of the payments regulation. I yeah. understand it. Okay. Which is a bit of both. Um, on that point, is, is Michael Ruggs gone? No. Yes, I think he's gone. I'm going to plug his work, by the way, <laughs> in terms of talking to regulations. Um, the Cambridge University just published uh, interesting, actually, I would say fantastically. You can download it, I think, or get it. It's called the Global Crypto Asset Regulatory Landscape Study. It's 23, I think, regulations all over the world. They've actually seen what's the most used, um, uh, for example, um, Word, so we moved on away from digital currency through virtual currency. Now maybe crypto assets, cryptocurrency is the most preferred used. The done analysis as well of what kind of regulations are new, what countries have actually gone and actually retrofitted system regulations, which is very, very interesting. And Japan is clearly covered in that as well, which I think is very good. Um, I just wanted to, to close off maybe with in terms of, we mentioned G20. Um, my concern, I think it's a good thing that the regulators and policymakers want to look about how we can actually look at, um, put our hands on understanding potential risks on crypto assets. Um, everybody's trying to do a global coordination of that. Um, and I know there's not much we can do because G20 hasn't happened yet. Shinny's is actually not happening until, until next week. But you are really trying to um, push a real global engagement effort. How much can you say about um, be safe? Oh, I think that uh, um, one of the uh, Japanese uh, professor uh, uh, Shinjiro Matsuo and uh, you know one guy from uh, JFSA uh, Utah, 
uh, technology is kind of like a, kind of like promoting a concept to, you know, uh, to the more like a have our, uh, provide a way to engage with uh, developer communities and because uh, it's very important to understand uh, you know that uh, what what is happening in a tech, tech communities and uh, so in that context you know uh, Japan FSA say uh, it's really understand uh, you know te technical trend and uh, so 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 I think they're they're trying to uh, try not to regulate but uh, you know they want to create a better way to you know deal with the, these technologies and uh, so, so in that in that context i think that uh, we had uh, a jfsa roundtable so where you know not only the regulator but also that uh, the developer community people uh, joined to discuss about that okay and i think that's a point actually of um has Anyone here worked with the Financial Action Task Force um, guidelines, draft guidelines that have been going around? You have? What do you think? Um, not evolving as quickly as we expected. Exactly. So, and I'll just be two minutes. Um, that's exactly the example. I always, I, I use an example to explain to people, particularly in policy making and regulation stuff. It's impossible for somebody to look at considering risks and opportunities of technology they have not seen, okay? So I'll give you an example of my mother. I gave her a phone about eight years ago. I told her it was a mobile phone. It was for her to get calls on the go whenever I called her. So she would answer calls, and that was fine. You know, she didn't have to be at home by the phone to answer my calls, which was great. Um, so as she got more comfortable, I started sending text messages, and I never got replies from the text messages. And I arrived at the airport, said, Mom, I'm home. I never got a reply. Are you okay? I never got a reply. I just never got replies to the, you know, to the text messages. So one day, I called my mother, and I said, Mom, why are you not replying to the text messages? And she said, oh, I, I read them. I know. Yeah, but mom, you have to reply to them for me to know that you read them. So it was before WhatsApp and the double blue tick, right? But the point I'm making is I had given her a mobile phone and she understood it was for mobile phone calls and that was enough. I hadn't got the step further to explain to her with this thing, now you can do something like a text, okay? So what I'm seeing here is that when you're sitting up in front of regulators and policymakers and you're trying to get them to understand what technology like blockchain can do, you have to show it to them somehow, and I think that's what um, uh, GFSA has done really good with engagement. An example of that is the Financial Action Task Force guidelines. Uh, from the feedback received from the global digital finance, it is clear that there are some of the proposals in there are just not possible from a technology perspective. Again, there's a disconnect there. So maybe cussing off on, on the FATFA, please. Like, there's not much we can do, as I said, on the G20, because this is happening now uh, Friday and uh, Saturday, so um, keep an eye on the news. Hopefully there'll be some developments and some agreements from, uh, from all our G20 finance ministers. Um, the Financial Action Task Force um, is due to vote this month on crypto regulations. So, how many people knew about that? Well, you might want to get a draft <laughs> of that and start looking at them. I would say, because they are uh, voting on that uh, this month, as I said. The global digital finance have done a really, really good job of providing feedback, so I have a few other people. But what's interesting is FAT found one side of voting on that this month, but Yosco are actually opening a public consultation next month. So I'm not sure how the Financial Action Task Force global effort is going to tie up with the, with the IOSCO. At the same time, we have the fifth um, anti-money laundering directive um, being implemented at the end of, uh, of July, something that I know Japan has worked really hard because of the previous um, issues they've had with Mangox and Coincheck. So if you want to understand whether how could af affect you, there's a specific def uh, um, definition of virtual currency in the fifth AML, but also uh, what a virtual asset provider is. So please check that out. It might be of interest to you. Um, to the SEC, I think there was a, a very interesting uh, fintech um, action, sorry, fintech task force discussion a few days ago. Um, they moved on to some discussion about maybe, maybe potentially tokens could be tradable as a security without being security, but nothing is uh, defined as or agreed as I know from an SEC perspective. So that is the fastest update on global regulations I could possibly give anyone. Is that okay? 
Okay. Um, any questions yeah. for me? First so, sure. so for, for the Japan side, you know, um, we have a uh, crypto rice, uh, exchange license, but uh, so we, we, we have started regulating the uh, custodian as well. So uh, maybe starting next year. So I think the wallet service provider or custodian type of uh, business will affect, them, especially in Japan. Yeah, that's very good. And just maybe to qualify as well, like you already have covered regulations in terms of investor protection. You've already done the uh, the, the exchanges, which yep. is very important. And you've been wanting to strengthen the AML because even after strengthening AML, coin checks still happened, yep. correct? Yeah. So you actually would say you're a, 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 an example to follow. Very good. Thirsty for a beer now? Yeah. Oh, there is a question. <laughs> good question. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, somehow uh, Bitcoin Cash community has exist in Japan, but uh, in terms of trading, uh, still Bitcoin is, uh, I think, uh, dominant in, in Japan market. And, uh, and, and evidence said that uh, actually that uh, some of the exchanges with the role of listing in Bitcoin Cash. So I don't know. It's okay if, you know, as, as far as uh, technology is supported by a lot of engineers and communities, uh, I think it's okay. And, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't quite, you know, uh, I don't know about uh, that, 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 that one. But, uh, but the academia, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, especially in Japan, uh, is working on, uh, you know, creating a standard for, uh, you know, uh, custodians. And, uh, and I know that, uh, that, that, that the kind of, you know, uh, program is, you know, running. But I'm not sure how, you know, working with a global standard in Japan. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Good. Great. Thanks. Thank you uh, for joining us on the stage. It was probably the best and uh, like most intense update on regulation.